Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics in the video question line. Today's topic is going to be about datums, datum features, and datum simulators. Today's question is I understand how planar datums constrain degrees of freedom, but I still don't understand how axes or point datums are supposed to constrain degrees of freedom. With planar datums, you can picture it as a datum simulator, but how do you do that with an axis or a point? This is a really good question, and sometimes it's hard to picture conceptually. So let's walk through a couple examples. So for a planar example, we have this part here where the bottom surface is flat. That bottom surface is technically called the datum feature. It's the tangible, imperfect surface of that feature. Now, that feature needs to create a datum. And the datum is theoretical. It's intangible, and it's a perfect flat plane. So how do we create something that's perfectly flat and planar off of something that's not perfectly flat and is tangible? Well, we introduce something we call a datum simulator. The datum simulator, in this case, is going to be a granite table. Now, for those of us in the inspection industry, we know these granite tables or surface plates are very flat. In fact, they can be checked and made sure that they stay flat. So we know it to be very flat. And that granite table could also create a simulated datum, which is again, a theoretically perfectly flat plane. Now, if we picture putting this part onto the granite table, the datum and the simulated datum become almost the same thing. So the flatter our table gets, or the flatter our surface plate is, the closer we get to simulating the actual datum. And now any measurement we take with reference to this flat planar datum comes directly from our tangible surface of the surface plate. And in this scenario, this datum acting as a plane here restricts one translation up and down, a rotation about this way, and a rotation about in and out of the page. So if we were looking at it here, it'd be a rotation on this plane, a rotation on this plane, and a translation up and down. So we have to picture the bottom surface of this part almost magnetically connecting to this surface, and it can't disengage from that surface. Once we've engaged into a datum, we cannot disengage it. So this datum as a plane controls three degrees of freedom. One translation, two rotations. But we also know that there's other datum features such as cylinders. Cylinders can create datum features as well. Now, if we're trying to simulate a datum axis, we're gonna use the physical surface of a cylinder right? And that's our datum feature. That is our datum feature A. And we have what we need to create is the datum, the datum being an axis derived from the true geometric counterpart or a perfect cylinder. So we need to simulate a perfect cylinder that touches the high points, just like the plane did, uh, touches the high points of that tangible surface. And now the axis of that perfect cylinder is our datum axis. So we know conceptually what we need to do. Uh, the equipment needs to engage, again, the high points of that surface. So it's going to be some sort of cylindrical thing that encompasses our datum feature, shrinks around it, and settles on the high points of that cylinder. So now we have a physical datum simulator, just like our granite table, and we have a simulated datum we can pull from that datum simulator. And so now the closer our physical simulator gets to simulating a datum, the closer we get to actually being able to measure from the datum. So what this might look like in the real world is something like you see here, a super spacer or a three jaws and a chuck that'll rotate this part and give you an axis of rotation, especially if you're checking run out. Watch this animation as this three jaw chuck engages the high points of that cylinder first. Now, if we rotate this part, we'll get an axis of rotation that we can then measure from directly from this machine and know either the runout or the position of these holes with respect to that axis. And now that we've clamped and engaged our datum surface with our datum simulator, we know that we've measured and simulated the datum. Now the pitfalls obviously is if these jaws are not picking up the high points of our cylinder. So if you have three points of contact, you're clearly not contacting these areas of our surface. And that's just the risks we have to understand when we're going to simulate a datum. As inspectors, it's up to us to choose the process that best simulates that datum. 
And if we're confident we've grabbed those high points and we've created a datum axis or an axis of rotation, we know that we can inspect this part back to that datum axis. One other method that we can show is using V blocks. Now, if we have two datum features here creating a single datum axis or a single axis of rotation, we can set those datum features in these V blocks and rotate this part. Now the act of rotating that part will create an axis of rotation that we can then use as a datum simulator. And based off the geometry of our gauge blocks and the diameters measured here, we can understand where that axis of rotation occurs and we can do our inspections appropriately. And again, as we've engaged our datum simulators, we cannot disengage them. And so we've stopped two degrees of translation and two degrees of rotation. So around here and around here. What we haven't done until we've stopped sliding this part in is stopped translation in and out and stopped rotation about the axis. And so that's why a cylinder or an axis as a datum can control four degrees of freedom, two translations and two rotations. Same thing here for the V blocks. We can see that we've stopped translation, right? We cannot disengage from the V block. We've stopped translation that way. We've stopped translation this way. We've also stopped rotation this way, as well as this way. But what we haven't done is stopped translation in and out of the axis of rotation or the rotation about that axis. And so again, our, we see our datum axis is controlling four degrees of freedom, two translations and two rotations. So to get back to our question, understanding how other features such as the cylinders can stop degrees of freedom and we can simulate those degrees of freedom looks a lot like these two examples here. We're engaging and creating an axis of rotation or an axis around the cylindrical feature that stops two degrees of freedom in translation and two degrees of freedom in rotation. And hopefully this helps you understand the difference between datums, datum features, and datum simulators, and that when we take measurements, they are back to the datum simulators. And the more accurate our datum simulators are to representing the datum, the better off we are on the quality side of things. Once again, thanks for joining me and we'll see you in the next video. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.